Hello students, the chapter that we will be doing today is Cell, the structural and functional unit of life. You might have noticed when a building is being constructed, the basic unit which is used to construct this complex building is the brick. Similarly, all living organisms, they too have a very complex body made up of different body parts. They are so different from each other, yet they are all composed of tiny units just as the brick, which is called the cell. The cell performs all functions of the organism for its survival. So, what is a cell? A cell is defined as the structural and functional unit of all living beings. It is the smallest part of the body of an organism which is capable of independent existence and of performing all the essential functions of life. This is a very very important point that this cell it can survive independently. It does not require any additional assistance for its existence. It is capable on its own. Plus for the survival of an organism certain functions need to be performed and basically these cells they can perform all the essential functions of life every organ in our body let's say the skin the brain the muscle and even the bone they are made up of hundreds and thousands of cells similarly every part of a plant let's say the leaf the flower the root all are made up of large number of cells. Every cell has its own life. Old and weak cells in the body continually die and are replaced by new cells. We ourselves too began our lives as a single cell. The branch of biology which deals with the study of cells is called cytology. So now we know that it is a very very small structure the cell is very very small and it cannot be seen with the naked eye but the invention of microscope led to the discovery of the cell the first microscope was developed by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek he was a very simple man he was an ordinary public official who just used to make microscope out of hobby and he made the simple biconvex lens. In this picture you can see the frontal and the posterior view of the microscope which was developed by Leeuwenhoek. He developed this microscope and basically it is comparable to the magnifying glasses that we use today to basically see an object but we know that we can uh, see certain objects under the uh, magnifying glass. We cannot see very very tiny objects such as the cell under the magnifying glass that we use. But Leeuwenhoek's discovery inspired another man named Robert Hooke who developed the compound microscope. Now the compound microscope could achieve much higher magnification. What he did he used two lenses in the compound microscope. Leeuwenhoek he used one lens and Robert Hooke he used two lenses in his microscope. He took a slice of a cork and put it under his microscope and he observed that it was made up of tiny box like compartments piled up together. To him this reminded of the rooms or the cells of the monks in a monastery and so he said that the cork was made up of cells. The cells in which the monks used to live. So Robert Hooke was the first man to use the term cell. Why did he see cells that were completely box like? Because we know that the cork is made up of the dead part of the plant and hence all the inside of the cells were basically dead and he could only see the box like structures. But the important factor here to remember is Robert Hooke coined the term cell. So this is a very important point that Robert Hooke coined the term cell. Now we know how the cell was invented. 
Now let us look at the cell theory. In the year 1838, Matthias Cleden, a German botanist, announced that every plant cell is made up of large number of cells and these cells performed various life processes. In the following year, in 1839, a German zoologist Theodor Swan made similar discoveries in animals. So he declared that all plants and animals are made up of cells which serve as the unit of structure and function. Next, in the year 1858, Rudolf Virchow said that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. So all of these three major points came together and hence the cell theory was proposed. Cell theory was proposed by Matthias Cleden, Theodore Swan and Rudolf Virchow and it states that the cell is the unit of structure of all living things. The cell is the unit of function of all living things and all cells develop from pre-existing cells. Next, cells. How numerous? We now know that all organisms are made up of cells. But for each organism, the number of cells may vary. It can be categorized into three major groups. One, single-celled. Single-celled organisms are those organisms which are made up of just one single cell. One single cell basically serves as the entire body for this particular organism. Example, amoeba. Other examples include bacteria, yeast. They are just made up of one single cell. The next group is few-celled. Some small plants and animals are made up of relatively few cells. Organisms consisting of a few hundred or a few thousand cells are simply called the few-celled organisms. Examples include Spirogyra, Volvox. Here I have shown Spirogyra. Lastly, the third group is multi-celled. Most plants and animals which we see around us with our naked eyes, including ourselves, are made up of millions and billions of cells. Examples include mango tree, human being. Now, how small these cells are? The smallest cells are the bacterial cells that range from 0.3 to 0.5 micrometer, the red blood cells which is about 7 micrometer. So these are the smallest cells. The longest cell are the nerve cells. You can see from the structure itself that it is a long, long cell. And why is it so? So that it can carry the impulse from various parts of the body to the brain and vice versa. And the largest cells are bird's eggs. And the largest bird egg is the ostrich egg. Cell shapes to perform various functions. Cells vary greatly in shape. They may be disc-like, polygonal, rectangular, cuboid, thread-like, branched or even irregular. These shapes of cells are often related to different functions they perform. For example, the human red blood cells or RBCs are circular. Why? Because they have to transport oxygen to various parts of the body. Next, the white blood cells or the WBCs are amoeboid so that they can squeeze through the capillary walls. Nerve cells are long so that they can conduct impulses from distant body parts to the brain and vice versa. Guard cells of stomatal pore in leaves are bean shaped to open and close the pore. Here we can see the images. These are all single celled and there are different structures. There, this is the fat cell which looks like um, circular. Then there is the nerve cell which is long and elongated. This is the amoeba. The white blood cells, they also resemble the amoeba shape because they need to squeeze through the capillary walls of the blood vessels. 
this is the human sperm this is how it looks this is the red blood cells which is disc like because it has to carry oxygen to different parts of the body this is the stomatal cells of the leaf so basically we can see that no matter how different these cells are the shapes of these cells are based on the functions they perform so important questions from today's lecture define a cell what is cytology who invented the simple microscope who coined the term cell what is cell theory who proposed the cell theory what is single celled few celled and multi celled give examples name the smallest longest and largest cell why different cell has different shapes here i am going to add that for the first question define a cell if it's a two mark question you will just write the definition which was provided in the previous slides but if it is a four mark or five mark question you are definitely going to provide a diagram of the cell the diagram i'm going to be updating in the part 2 of the this lecture series i will add that and then i will give you the entire five mark answer for this definition of cell for the rest of the questions the answers are already provided if you did not understand any topic and need a little more understanding or explanation do let me know in the comment section down below and yeah have a good day happy learning see you next time bye bye